Larry not being here. She was meant to be here. All right. First, Second King chapter number five. We're going to read one verse and we're going to explain a little bit what we're fixing to come into here as we preach tonight. And verse number three of Second King chapter five. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is to marry him, for he would recover him of his letters. Father, ask you to bless the scripture and read it tonight. Help us tonight as we preach your word. Use us, Lord, for your glory and your honor. Yes, God. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Now, if we kind of jump in out of the middle of the story, we need to tell you exactly what's going on. You read about the Syrian had invaded Israel. And they had won and defeated Israel. And they took a lot of people and they took a lot of things from Israel. But during this time, they took a little old maid, a little girl, a little young girl, young woman, and she became Naaman, who was the captain of the Syrian army. They took, she, he took her to be his, his servant. Well, Naaman, we see something about Naaman tonight. Naaman was a leper. Leprosy was very common in those days. Leprosy was automatic death sentence. Because when they had leprosy, it started out as a little, little sore on you, on you. It would spread and eventually it would start decaying your body. I remember years ago, I went to church with a man, uh, probably over 30 years ago. And he had a bad skin disease, Brother Phil, and it literally reminded me of just like leprosy. As a matter of fact, it had got to the point it had eaten his, he had to have both arms amputated. Had to take a medicated bath every two or three times a day. And Brother Phil, you get close to him with no, no disrespect to him, he was had one of the awfulest males about it because mm -hmm. of that disease. So we see here Naaman has came and had won the Syrian army and came and they defeated Israel and they brought back this little baby from Syria and Israel there to where he was. But as we see here, evidently we read about Naaman being a leper. Uh, we might have been the little old lady, the little girl, the little maid was there working in the house and one day she probably heard that someone talked about about him being his wife, maybe been Naaman's wife. Talking about how bad off he was, having, having leprosy. That little girl, that, that little maid said in verse 3, the text we read tonight, he said, he said, look, he said, would my God was in the would, would my God or my Lord or with the providence of Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. Now we understand a lot of we talk about here. He said, look, if he would if he would go there, if he would go to Go that he could recover him of the leprosy. Now we read the story about him doing it. You know how Naaman had to dip seven times in the Jordan and all that. But that's not the story I'm going to try to preach on tonight. I'm going to try to give you a little something tonight to help him. It will both all of us. This is the heart of the church tonight, and I want to help you a little bit and I understand some things here. But look here, it, the Bible said that that little girl had a little had an influence to get to be able to. To tell that woman, or tell Naaman's wife, and Naaman listen to her. Tonight, I want to preach on this thought tonight, being a good steward of influence. Everybody, everybody, from the youngest, youngest person to the oldest person in this building, we all have an influence over people, either a good influence or a bad influence. We all do. And let me tell you what, may we pray that God will let us be a great example of a, 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 of a disciple of Christ that we can bring honor to Him. But influence is an important subject, ought to be a more important subject to you as a Christian. I've heard so many people say this, and boy, it bothers me when I hear them say it. It don't matter what people think about me. It don't matter what people think about me. I, don't, I believe that's wrong. I believe you ought, as a child of God, you ought to want to have a great testimony for Amen. the cause of Christ. Amen. You ought to want to be able to be a great witness for the cause of Christ. You ought to be uh, active though you're a recipient of the grace of God and you live for God and you're living for God. But yeah. we're talking about influence tonight. We're talking about influence. Our whole life is pretty much wrapped up in our success or failure to, to influence people. 
And a lot of people that don't have God good influence on people. A lot of people have a bad name. You've heard people have a bad name. You, 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 certain people you've heard talk, uh, people talk about, and people kind of get scowled on their face because they're not, they're not a very good person. But we see here tonight, we need as God's people here in the heart of the church, the meat of the church tonight, we ought to strive to be good stewards of the influence of yes. other people. Amen. People are watching everybody tonight. They're not as much looking for the bad, good things in you. They're looking for the bad things in you. Yeah. 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 And well, don't give them any ammunition, amen, amen. amen. to be able to, be able to throw slurs at us and stuff. But you know what? I looked up the, the, the definition of influence. It's what Miriam Webster Dictionary said. It means the power to change or affect someone or something, the power to cause changes without directly forcing them to happen, person or thing that affects someone or something in an important way. That's what he said. He said we ought to be a person that can change people without even bit by the way we live. Hey, so many people that I have not got any influence. That they've not got they've not got a good influence. They some people tonight, and I know in churches all over our country tonight, sitting in church pews, I guarantee you, there's a lot of people that are influences far from what it ought to be. But I want to be a good steward of influence tonight, folks. Yeah. We're not perfect people. I know we're not. We fall short every day. Lord knows, bro. David said, I'm nothing but ducks. That's all I am. David even considered, called himself a worm one time. That's all we are. But you know what? I'm glad that God one day graciously saved every one of us. Yep. And I'm glad tonight I'm saved by the grace of God. And Lord, I may go through testing and trial. And I may walk in this world. But Lord, I want to be a person yep. of influence and honor and glorify God. Amen. So we see here, only preach on being a good influence. First of all, start it off, and it ain't going to be very long, but it's going to have some stuff in we need to hear. We need to be people of influence. The Bible says over here in 2 Corinthians 3 2, He said, You are epistles written in our heart, known and read of all men. You know what? Your book, and people read you as a book, they'll do easier the fairy tale or the real thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You know, preacher. I, and a lot of say, well, I don't care what people say. You want to. It ought to break your heart that people look at you and they say, well, if that's a child of the Lord, I don't want nothing to do with it. And a lot of people tonight, they say, well, it don't matter. I'm going to do my own thing. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. But you'll never be blessed from God. And God will never use you. You'll never be a person of good influence. Yeah. You never will be a person. You may be, I want to be a good influence on people. I don't Amen. want people to brag on me, but I want them to see me and brag on the Lord that I serve. Amen. That's the man to glorify Him in our life. Look here. No matter what age or gender or race or nationality, everybody has an influence. You young boys, you got influence. Yes. Everybody in this building, we have influence on people. You can influence. You know what? There's been many times. Been, you know this to be true. There's been a many person that got messed up because they were influenced with somebody with a bad influence. Uh -huh. Amen. But they, and some of you agree. Some of us and I, we know people. We've been serving God a long time. We've known a lot of people that's been a great influence in our life. Mm -hmm. Amen. We've had pastors. We've had friends. We've had we've had brothers and sisters in Christ. That's been a great influence on me, and I can think of a lot of people right now. Some of them's already shot on the streets of heaven in heaven. Amen. But I know they've been an influence. There's people already still living in this earth that are a great influence on me. Yeah. But let me tell you what: whether you want to be a leader or not, you are. Yeah. Everybody here can lead some more, some sense. And I'll tell you what: we ought to, ought to say, God, I want to be a, have a good influence on people. I don't want, I don't want to be a cause of. A cause of my brother or my sister to stumble in the way. Yeah. I don't want to be a cause of people to turn their back on God because I'm living such a life that don't measure up to the Word of God. Yeah. I want to have an influence in people's lives. I want to be a blessing to people. I want to live for God. I want to be a light shining in a dark, in a dark world. And tell you what, everybody, it don't matter. You know, it, it don't, it just don't, just don't, just don't, uh, just, just don't apply to preachers. They promise everybody in this building is saved. Everybody. But look here. On a scale of one to ten, 
Your influence can be very low level, which means level one, or a high level of level ten. But make, make mistakes. Every one of us are on the scale. Now how do you measure up on the scale? You ever thought about that? How do you measure up on the scale? Come home, you come to church, you, you live, you, you doing well, everybody where you get to, people love you. You go home and you're a different person. A lot of people are, a lot of people tonight are are, are, are suffering from the Jekyll and Hyde uh, syndrome yeah. as a Christian. Yeah. Pray to God, they, they bless the Lord on, on Sunday and cuss the devil on Sunday. Yeah. And they got children, they got grandchildren, they got, they got co-workers and everyone else that they see that, you know what you're doing? You're a bad influence. I don't want to be a good influence on people. Amen. 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 The higher you are on the scale of influence, the more effective you'll be. A positive effect you'll be. Mm -hmm. I want to be a positive effect on people. Preachers have got the preachers. Now there's a lot of preachers that's, that's really what by the way, and it's really compromised. And a lot of them are just way out of my own basis. A lot of them don't be preach the Bible, they don't preach the word of God no more. There's so many men over the last several years run off of somebody else's wife. They took over the church treasure. They manipulated and raped the church, so to speak. They Amen. took advantage of the church. Amen. And you know what? They stereotype us, the ones that try to serve God. They say, look at us. That hurts the cause of Christ. Not Amen. every man that stands in the pulpit after your life. Not Amen. every man that stands in the pulpit. It won't cause the money he can get. For Let Christ. me tell you, but you know what? We are judged by those with that influence. Amen. Amen. For Christ. Amen. We sure are. God help, I don't want to be like that. No, sir. I always, I, I mean this all my heart. You listen to me. Before I would do that, I wish God would take me home. Amen. I do not want, I'd rather die and beat the brother Mark and die in the feet. Amen. To me, I want to be an influential people. Let me tell you what, there have been people tonight that have influenced others to do things they would normally wouldn't have done, but they had such an influence and impact on people. They listen to this. Amen. Some of them put a time in prison, not some of them already did. But I'll tell you what, friend. The Bible is filled with, with a wide variety of people that had influence. It was, we'll start with that little old maid here, here in that text we read it. It said in verse 3, she said, Her mistress would, would God my Lord was with the prophet of Samaria, for he would recover of his leprosy. You know what? She, she must have lived, but like, here's why I think. That woman, that little maid, must have listened to Godly. They paid attention to her. Really? They believed her. Yeah. Some people did not go to my head and got a believable testimony. Amen. And I want my belief, my testimony to be believable. Mm -hmm. Because what we, we see here also, not only was it, was it the young maid, but also see the little boy. You mean the man, the boy with the left the, 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 the boy had the five loaves and two fishes. And all of that crowd, Brother Philip, 5,000 leave men and not count the women and the children. And all of that crowd is part of that one more. He must have some kind of influence, Brother Mike. Right. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what tonight, you can have a great influence. You don't have to be a scholar or a theologian, but just live for God and let the love of Jesus radiate through you. Amen. He was a little old teenage boy, redheaded, redheaded. Every teenage boy had a great influence. You know why? Because he knocked the giant out and killed the giant. David had an influence. He was the one having guts to stand up to the devil. Stand up to life. We got to show you, you got, we got a few young people here that you can have influence on people to school with you at. And sometimes we feel, like, I'm going to be a person of influence. I want people, people to know you. Now, I may not have been in church, and I may, not, I may not have a lot of money, but I'll tell you what, I want people to know that I love God, and may see me, they see a child of the king. I don't want to brag on me. I don't want to be bragged on, yeah. but I want to live with those. I'll, be glory, I'll glorify God in my yeah. life. Man, mm -hmm. man. Even that woman, that woman at the well, Brother Phil, she got right with God, but she did. She went into the city and said, come see a man. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 hey! Oh, hey, 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 Come see a man. hey, 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 a, 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 a steward of the influence. 
people died but they have a call to hit the Christian church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man. That's exactly right. Don't we also say something else here? We should be people of influence. We need to look at the process of influence. It might be a vocal expression. The greatest influence you can have on people is to say so. The Bible says, what the Bible says in Proverbs 18.21, he says this, Death and life are the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat fruit thereof. That little girl wasn't obliged to say anything. She, did, she, could, she didn't have to say anything, but she did. Our talk, our way we talk, our language has a big impact on people. Right. If they see you say ugly words and hear you curse and raise the devil, then you go to church, they see you sitting in the choir, sitting in the, in the yeah. church, get yeah. up singing and all, and you're not living with God, you know what they're doing? You, do, you push them far away from the kingdom. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. You're not here to fight with sinners. Well, I've known people do that back home. They said, this person got mad at me. I, I, I had to back them down. They supposed to be a good church for them. What did you say? Which I didn't want to say. All I know is one thing. Our way we walk away, our words influence people. They'll influence in a negative way or a positive way. They, some people have so much influence they cannot talk anybody to anything. I'll tell you what, friend. She just chose to say quiet, not said anything, and just remained in the shadows. She could say, she could, she could, she could make up a lot of reasons for not saying that. She just opened her mouth and said, "That would be influence." A tongue. You ever heard the old saying, "Loose lips sink ship"? Well, that's that's be right. You can say something that destroys a person's life. It destroys everything a person has by the way you talk, the way you, the way you gossip, you spread rumors about people. Not only was it, was it, was it, a, was it a vocal expression, it was also a visible excitement. People are looking for other, something that's real, Brother Warren. People are getting tired of this, this store bought religion, I call it. Hey. They get tired of people saying one thing but doing the other. Yeah, yeah. They want something. That's what you can't win people to God no more, friend. Yeah, yeah. It's because so many people are something to the edge. Yeah. And people, they men and they see them. And they see the people and say, well, I'm saved. But they see them all, all attitudes and actions that don't glorify God. Let me tell you, but there's a visible excitement in this woman's voice. A dead, discouraging, de uh, depressed attitude won't have a positive influence on anybody. I tell you what, I, even if my day is going bad, but I come in here and I want to let y'all know it. <laughs> you know why? Because it's a contagion to make your day good. Yeah. yeah. That's good. I mean, I don't care about a violin and stuff. I just say, you can tell me I'm not talking. Yeah. Yeah. I could. But I don't. We gotta understand we all got problems here. We all have everybody has needs. Everybody has problems. Everybody has things in their life that they they wish was bad. But let me tell you, we gotta understand you walk around dead, discouraged, despondent, you're not gonna have nothing but a negative influence on people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yes. They got you, they got you that you woe with me, poor, beautiful me. We tell you what, we all sometimes feel sorry for ourselves. Oh Elijah got to feel so sorry for himself. He said, God kill me. Just kill me, God. Yeah. Don't be a steward of influence. The visible excitement. Amen. I want you to see that. Hey, she said, Would God, my Lord, was with the prophet in Samaria. Do you notice at the last of that sentence, what's it, the last of that sentence? He said, It's an exclamation point. Look at it. It's an exclamation point. You know what? God showed us this. <laughs> God, I believe the Lord put this little, put that ex, that the exclamation point be put in this scripture to show that, that little maid was excited about the problem, tell the problem about, about what God could do. 
They what? We got to understand, folks, in our They some people ain't never seen what you seen, folks. They some people never experienced, never been to church, never been raised and went to church and learned to serve God. They people in Lee County, I guarantee you right now, that's never, ever stepped foot in a church. Not even been to church. It ought to be a visible excitement. Oh, that's yourself. Yeah. How would you? How, what? How would you do? How would you do? If you're the preacher and you stood in the pulpit and everybody stood there like one of the darling boys, <laughs> <laughs> how would it make you feel? <laughs> that's why I'm trying to preach the devil out of things. <laughs> but let me tell you, folks, we never understand this tonight. The Holy Ghost put that there to show us that that lady was excited about the problem. Mm -hmm. We ought to be, we're not, getting excited ain't enough, but you know, we need to be excited about the things that change life. We ought to thank God how He changed our lives. Yeah, right? Amen. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what, over 45 years ago, I couldn't be standing here. I would, I never, I'm going to tell God, I never thought I'd stand in front of a bunch of people. I, I, I was scared to death of people. I was. I'm still scared of them. <laughs> no, I'm not scared of them. <laughs> Put snakes in the uh, ground and that's all Amen. Amen. Put a snake on me, y'all. Tell me tongue to rot. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but he had a victorious energy. She had a bit, we ought to have an energy. A bit, bit, I'm talking about don't walk around gloomy. Do we? We nobody want to hear gloomy. Do no, I don't. Amen. If you so it gloomy, why don't you just get on your knees for the holy God and pray that you get yeah, hungry? Amen. Amen. What well, a lot of people they, they got all this wrong, but they don't know how to take care of it. They better just sit there and bathe in it. Amen. Yeah. They, they say, hey, I love it. I love to feel soft myself. Oh, let me tell you. Do you know that's a psychological no, it ain't a spiritual condition. When I was in school. There was some kind of syndrome. I went, I had to have that occupation for two years in high school. And they were, were conditioned patients to get when they get sick. It called grand doors of persecution. What that is, is they get to the point they think everybody's out to get them. Everybody's out, nobody loves them. A lot of church folk got ready to do the persecution. But <laughs> <laughs> everybody's going to get him. When they get mad when the preacher preaches, you nobody's know, going to preach, get mad at him. It's called the history between the eyes of the Word of God and they can't take it. Oh, yeah. Amen. I'm going to find what that ain't my note. It's pretty good. Amen. 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 But the end of the voice. Look at, look at the end of verse 3. As she said in her midst, would. God, my Lord, will be the prophet in Samaria for He would. I've got this other line in my outline. For He would recover him of his leper. Not that He may, and He might, but He can, He will. Yeah, right. he will. She was positive. Let me tell you, we need to learn to live for God in a positive way and have a positive influence instead of putting out bad vibes of what the world calls it and people see it. That don't want the people don't get saved. No. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't wonder nobody wants to come to Christ. Hey, they can be men for all. She said, men will just act like you are saved. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's good. Oh, we have to have time. I feel bad, sir. Sometimes I get the courage. I do. You know what I do when I get the courage? I plug in the power of the power of the power of the grace of God. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I turn in, turn on the top of the bad man. Yep. Yeah. And before you long business is picking up around the chapel house on the yeah. hey, sir. I learned a long time ago the best way to start your day off if you can. You pray, you read your Bible, if you if you're at the house working, play some music. Yeah. Yeah. Play some it'll get you going. Yeah, we will. It'll be a good idea if some of y'all do that before you come to church on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You don't know how much, Brother Phil. I've done it. Charlie Monica, Charlie Monica. Yes, sir. Monica. Yes, sir. But she was positive. She knew. She had a energy. She was victorious energy. She knew it. She said, I know. I know. If my Lord, she called the Lord, she respected name, even though he came, took her away from my home. She said, if my Lord see the prophet in Samaria, he would recover. Amen. 
You know what? How interesting it was she was sure that the prophet could heal leprosy even though it had never been done before. It had never mm. been done before. Amen. She knew he can. Look at verse, uh, we read in Luke 27, it says, and many lepers were Israel in, uh, many, and many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elijah the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, save the name of the Spirit. So no one, none got cleansed in him. How can we influence people, Brother Mike? Show confidence in God. Hey. And your walk with God. Amen. Don't pour them out and say, oh, you know, you know. I said, why well, we with eyes if it's good to be saved. Good to be in the house of God. Good to know him. I'm glad not only I know him, I'm glad more support he knows who I am. Amen. Yes. Amen. But we, I'm talking about influence. We want to influence others. People have bad influence. We've read about it all, all through the history of time and time. It hey, off Hitler, he influenced so many people. Six six and a half million Jews were put to death in the gas chambers. Mm -hmm. The concentration camp died in concentration camps. They said when he spoke, he he was the people a lot of those that are not expelled. I believe that's the that's the way demons in yep. demons yep. get in people and give them a power to influence people for negative things. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. I believe I believe some of these men that ain't preachers that tell you preachers, I believe they got that spirit in them. Yeah. Maybe. That's that crowd that said, if you don't do what I say, then I'll humiliate you, I'll dis disown you, yeah. and I'll make your life miserable. There's a, there's a preacher friend of mine right now, listen to me, I'll tell you, I, I, I want to call his name, I ain't going to call his name. But, he went against his young preacher in his church and his family, and you know what he said? The boy got, when, when the boy didn't do a thing wrong, he just got mad because the boy did what he felt like God would do, which years before he'd done the same thing to his pastor. And you know what that preacher said? This is the truth. That pastor said, if it's the last thing I do, I'm going to make sure that family is destroyed. Mm. 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 That man didn't get saved. Yeah, yeah. Uh, amen. Hey, the people made me mad before about the line. Mad at them by the 20 penny nail in town. But hey, I'm about to judge hey, God. God is. Yeah. I learned all the way I can sit God. Amen. But you know what? I'm talking about influence. Have a great influence on people. It can have a great influence on people. Last but not least, we, we, we've talked about the people they influence in the process of influence. But I want to talk about the prize. Let's remember this. Uh, remember the, uh, the meaning of influence, the power to change or affect someone or something, a personal thing that affects someone or something in a important way. She made, she made a decision to say something. The maid did. She, she made a decision to be excited about it. And she had it, but she demonstrated her confidence in God. You know what? There's nothing God can't do in my folks. And sometimes, some of you have been through a lot of stormy times in your, in your life. And all of you don't even know, you didn't even know when you were going to make it. Right. But you did. Yes. Many of us have been broke, so broke, but so broke, we just, we were broke, 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 broke. But God always helped us through what we had to face. Yes, He did. Some of us have been down, down in the dust in, in the valleys of our life. And God's brought us out. And some of us have got to the point we've seen people. We, we might have had indirectly had a, had a part in them getting saved. Ain't that wonderful? Yes. Yeah. Ain't that wonderful? You might have been a help or influence for somebody to get saved. Yes. But I'll tell you what tonight's what we got to say. I'm going to be a steward of influence. I want to, I want to be influenced in the way I dress. The way I dress. The way I speak, the way I present myself in, present myself in this world. 
I want people to see my life and say, hey, that's something different about that man right there. I don't have to go and get my car and truck and put signs all over. I'm going to say I'm born again child of God. It's all right if you want to do that. But Paul said we we're epistles writ, seed and written, written and seen of all. And we're led, that word epistles means letters. Mm -hmm. People read our lives. You know what? You can't, a lot of, you can't be with law, don't mean they done. Because they can pick out a phony from the crowd. I can't even get that word. Yeah. There have been so many people tonight that got the ball when it comes to influence. I mean, say, how can influence you get for the people in my life tonight? Do you got, have you got a bad temper? Are you easy to blow out of shape and say things and do things that later on you wish you had but you always... Let me tell you, once you do something or say something, you can't fix it. You can't unscramble an egg when you scramble an egg. You can't get it back in the shell like it was. It's done. It's done. What you have to do is live with the consequences and ask God to forgive you. But anytime we do that, a little bit of chink out of our temple. A little chink. A little chink. A little chink. We talk out of our temple. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Right. right. When you understand something like that, I won't be somebody that won't be this. I won't be somebody that that thinks I, I, I'm not that somebody. I'm just a sinner, same I agree with the amazing grace of God. I try to love people. I love everybody. I, I, I try, some people you can't love, I try to anyway. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what, we need to understand that we got to be influenced, folks. I want, when I stand in this pulpit, people hear me preach, I won't say that man knows God. I won't get, when you sing, oh, you, I hope people know when you sing, you'll go tell the voice that I hope people know that I know what I'm saying. Amen. Exactly. All right. That's good. Too many entertainers, too many, too many entertainers today. <coughs> but I want to be influenced. I want, I, I want, you know what, and I'm going to go ahead and say this, be a perfect influence. I believe a person that's good influence will be an honest person. Don't you? I believe they'll be honest and all the things. I believe they'll be honest and they don't, they don't, they will, they will lie. They're honest. I'll tell you what, I'll tell the truth. Sometimes the truth does hurt, but you've got to be truthful. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, we understand it's not, we're going to close right here in a minute. Her one passion, passionate, excited, heartfelt state, had an unbelievable amount of this. And you know what, if I, I just thought like this. Reckon what name and thought about her after he come back from being healed. I guarantee you that he looked at her in a different light. I guarantee you he come back with skin like a baby's skin. He left all scarred up and marked up and all, got all kind of sore. He came back. I can't, I can't help believe he might have thanked her. Thank her. She had that in had she not had the influence on Brother Philip, he would never listen to her. Yeah. So let me tell you what tonight, friend. What kind of influence you have tonight? What kind of influence you have on people in your life? Are you just a Sunday morning Christian? Are you just a Sunday morning church member? That's it? <coughs> I heard people say one time coming through. God don't want me. Uh, weekend visitation. He wants he wants a lot of time right to you. That's what he wants. <laughs> How many people do you have a positive effect on? Them? How many people do you have a positive effect? How about your family, your friends? How about your co-workers? How about anybody? How about that? <coughs> How many have a negative focus, negative uh, uh, influence on people? May we do this tonight. May we purpose in our heart. Lord, by your grace and help, I want to be great influence on people. Not to be bragged on, but God, but I want to do it because it's the right and godly thing to do. And I guarantee if you do that, God bless you in a mighty way. I want to be good influence on people, folks. Amen. I want to now leave this world. <coughs> I want to have again people say he truck that I, I left a good influence. My dog talked to Davey, she had, but she's moving this weekend. 
And I'll talk about, we'll talk about, and I, I hope I never have to leave this church. I hope I die here at this church. Not in the church. Maybe. Wow. Maybe. <laughs> She said, well, Daddy, what happens if you have to leave? I said, I don't know. She said, I'll build you. We'll get you a place to stay in a little tiny, tiny house. I said, I won't be living no 10, 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I'm 70 years, yeah. you know, most of us will. But I won't have info. I won't have info when he's young. Yeah. I won't have a good info on something. I pick up. <coughs> I love him. He don't know if I love him. I love, I love, I love, I love. Let me tell you what, we need to understand tonight, folks. The way we measure up on God's scale of our influence will determine how much we're affecting up those lives. Amen, Lord. Amen. We need to understand. Let's just remember. Let's all stand tonight. I don't know if this might help you keep a little something to think on tonight. But I do want to be a steward of this thing. Dear Father, tonight, thank you for letting us be here. Lord, we 